feature animal of the day. Yes, right. We're going to feature animal of the day. It's a parrot. Yes. Hello. <laughs> I can't really do much of a bird sound. I can try. Hey, welcome to our learning target and a new video. What do we have going on here today? It says our learning target. Our objective is to relate decimal and fraction multiplication. Okay, I like that because decimals and fractions, they are very much related. They're like cousins, you know, you know, like brothers, sisters, like they're totally related. Now, uh, we have some language frames here. These are just to help guide us in our speaking. So when in class we want to verbalize our mathematical reasoning, this is a great way to do it with these little language frames to get us set up so we don't keep going like, like, and like, and you get the idea. I think so. Let's go to the next page. Voila, here we go. Hello. Hey, there he is. Yay. All right. Man, I just love math. Aren't you excited? Yes, we're going to start relating decimal and fraction multiplication. So I have this problem here on my screen. What I see is I see one-tenth of four. It's really what I see. Because I know the multiplication, when we take 0.1, one-tenth of something that I'm actually multiplying. What I like to do, though, is to write this expression as a multiplication sentence using a fraction and then to go ahead and solve that. If I'm going to find that one of, so I'm going to write that as, I'm going to put my one-tenth as a fraction, as I stated, one-tenth times four, okay, is going to equal, yeah, four, four-tenths. Now we did that. Now I'm going to go ahead and write that as a decimal, which is also equal to four-tenths is equal to four-tenths, which is 0.4. So 0 0.1 or 1 tenth times 4 then equals, yeah, 0 0.4, 4 tenths. I know, it's like a little cave boy or cave girl could do this, right? Yeah, it's pretty easy. But let's compare the four ones that we started with. We have this here and with the, with the product that we found. The four tenths. I want to see if I can put the four and the four tenths on a place value chart. There's a lot of bright green here. Now I'm going to go ahead and write it this way. My four ones would be put right here. Now when I said four times one tenth, what my answer ended up being was four tenths. I'm going to put another decimal here. Put my four down here. Well, here. This is interesting when we look at this because look what happened. The digit here actually moved to the right, what happened is the four moved into the tenths column here. So it's like the four actually shifted to the right, which in essence would mean that the decimal actually moved to the left. So if we have 4.0 and we have 0 0.4, based on that four, you can say that the four here, that the actual decimal, it moved to the left. See that? And then the decimal ends up on this side, and now we have this number. You can say this two different ways. Eureka prefers versus say that the digit shifted to the right, which, in it, which means that the decimal moved to the left. However, I'm wondering why my answer got smaller. It's interesting that this was like making four copies of one-tenth. We talked about that in an earlier video, that we made four copies of one-tenth, and by doing so, we end up with four-tenths. See, there's 40 tenths in four holes, but one tenth of 40 is four. The unit is tenths, so the answer is four tenths. You hear that difference? The digit four stays the same because we are multiplying by one of something, but the unit that we're starting off with is smaller. So the digit four shifted one space to the right here, and that's why our answer is four tenths. Now, what about one hundredth of four? Let's multiply showing our thinking on the place value chart. One hundredth of four would then mean that we'd have one hundred, one hundredth times four, which equals four hundredths. Therefore, zero point one hundredth times four is equal to four hundredths. The same kind of thing happened. We're starting off, we have the number four. So let's go ahead and write that. I'm just gonna draw a line here. We're gonna draw our four Right, and then down below, we have our 100th, which is over here, which is 400th, I'm sorry, 400th. So we have, and what happens here? The four shifted all the way over two place values to the four. Again, we were looking at what four copies of 100th was, and that is four hundredths. Can you see the pattern if we'd taken 1,000th of four? 
how we're going to have the four remains the same, but the actual digit is going to shift three places over because four thousandths would equal then, in this case, 0 0.004. Let's do another problem. Let's take one tenth of two. Again, we're going to be making, first put this as a fraction. I have a good idea. Why don't you go ahead and do this one on your own, and then I will show you the result in the end. So here's all the work. I hope that you try this on your own, trying to save a little bit of time on this video. Let's do another practice one. So again, this example, you can see that we have six copies of one hundredth, which is going to equal six hundredths. All right. And again, the, this time the digit six shifted two place values to the left. And you see that shifted two times because we're talking about two powers of 10 here. All right. Let's look at another problem. So looking at this problem, let's go ahead and let's write the uh, fraction multiplication sentence and then let's solve it. Looks like one tenth times one tenth. And that's going to equal one hundredth. Like you remember when we multiply fractions, we multiply the numerators across. And of course, the denominators, we multiply those across and we get 100. Maybe let's draw an area model to see if this makes sense. And we'll use a 10 by 10 grid. So this row here could show one tenth, one tenth of that one hole. Let's make this one hole. So this is one tenth of that one hole. Then this would be one tenth of the one tenth. Okay, so here's your one tenth of one hole. Here's your one tenth of this one tenth here. So we have one tenth of one tenth. And does that make sense? Yes, it does. Let's just, maybe we could shade this in with white. This shows one hundredth right here. That shows one hundredth like our problem. And this is a good opportunity to look at what we're basically doing here with mathematical practice number four. It says that we model with mathematics. See, it says I can recognize math in everyday life and use math I know to solve everyday problems. And here you can see that we've, we have represented math, in this case with a concrete model. So now let's go ahead and show this multiplication problem on the place value chart. So I need to write one tenth. So let me go ahead and put my decimal here. And when it says I'm dealing with tenths, I'm gonna to wanna to write it in the, in the tenths place. I'm wondering what happened to the digit one that started here in the tenths place when we took one tenth of it. Well, if you remember that number one actually shifted to the right because one tenth here shifted with our answer, which was 0 0.01. It shifted into the hundreds place. See, we were taking one, see, we were taking a part of one tenth, so the answer is smaller than one tenth. We're taking a part of one tenth. So when you're taking a part of something, that number has to become smaller. It makes sense that the digit here shifted to the right uh, one place because the answer got smaller here. And again, if you want to think of the shifted to the, the decimal shifted to the left, that's another way you can look at it. Because whether you say that the digit shifted to the right, whether the digit moved or the decimal place moved, it's the same thing. If you say the decimal place moves one place to the left, therefore giving you one hundredth, or you don't move the decimal at all, then that zero coming over here makes, means the one's gonna to shift to the right one spot. It means the same thing. Just wanna be clear. So let's look at another problem. Now this one might look a little bit different Let's go ahead and take this one step by step. Again, we're trying to find 1.2 of 1 tenth. So let's go ahead and rewrite this as fractions. In this case, 1.2 is 1 and 2 tenths, but let's write that as a improper fraction or a fraction greater than 1. So this would actually be 12 tenths times 1 tenth. That's going to equal 12 hundredths. Therefore, if we were to rewrite this we could write this as 0 0.12, 12 hundredths. Well, let's rewrite the entire thing as the decimal. We had our 1.2, 1 and 2 tenths, times 1 tenth is going to equal 12 hundredths. Okay, so here we go. Let's go ahead and show our, our 
and 1.2 times 1 tenth. Remember, we had an answer of 0 0.12, which is 12 hundredths. So what happened to the digits? Well, the 1 shifted 1 power of 10 here to the right, and the same thing here. By multiplying by 1 tenth, it moved the digits to the right, 1 tenth, or, if you will, one decimal place to the left, if you're moving, moving just the decimal and not the digit. Here, the digits shift to the right, decimal place moves to the left. means the same thing. And there's a lot of problems in this particular lesson because there's, this is a really, really important lesson in that we're looking at how decimals and fractions are related to each other. And so we're making that connection. So we have another one where the decimals, now we have all decimals here. We don't have any whole numbers. So let's take a look at this one here. Again, let's write this as our fraction form. So we have 1 tenth okay, times, here we have 1 hundredth. So that's going to equal 1 thousandth, okay, which is... 0 0.001, that's a thousands place. Now if you remember in our model where we showed one tenth of one tenth, remember when we, we found that one model here and it showed one tenth of one tenth, and that was equal to one hundredth, okay? So I'm wondering what's gonna happen with this model? We have one tenth of one hundredth equals one thousand. Well, if we had to draw it, I think that we'd have to cut the whole vertically into a hundred equal parts and then just shade one, and then I'd probably have to cut just those up in tiny parts horizontally into 10 equal parts. And that's what could be done in the model. We're not going to actually do that model here, but that's what could be done. So let's go ahead and pull out our place value chart and then show that we're taking one tenth of, okay, one hundredth. Now remember in multi multiplication, taking one tenth of one hundredth, remember is the same as taking one hundredth of one tenth. So it really doesn't matter the order. But what would be significant is what happens to that digit one. Okay, now here we had a result of our product here was 1,000. So let's go ahead and write that one just like we've done before. And then if you notice here, that here the digit 1 now has shifted two places to the right. And interestingly, what we did find was we are finding 1 hundredth of that 1 tenth. And 1 hundredth was how many places it moved, two places to, to the right. The digits moved two places to the right, the 1 digit. We need to ask ourselves, you know, why did it shift? Why did the digit shift two places to the right? Right, some of you may have been thinking, well, you know, when we multiplied by one tenth, uh, it, it moved just one place, okay, to the right, the digit did. Similarly, if you think about it, when we multiply by 10, the numbers shift one place to the left. In this lesson, it's designed such that the digits move and shift to the right or to the left. So in this case, yes, it did move two places to the right because we were multiplying by one hundredth. And the opposite would happen if we were multiplying by one hundred. The digit would shift two places to the left. And I'm having to be very careful how I say this because I am used to the idea of how the decimal place moves because we did bring that up in earlier lessons. But here is another way to look at it. So let's look at another problem. Yes, another problem. Can you believe it? Now, this time, uh, I want to think about where the digit 5 will be. Okay, I want to try to visualize this on a place value chart. So what will happen as we multiply by 1 hundredth? And that was that we would end up with that the 5 is going to shift two places to the right. Because we have 5 tenths times 1 hundredth, which is going to equal 5 over 1,000, which of course is equal to 5 thousandths. So what's happening with our place value chart is that the 5 tenths listed here, and then we have our 5 thousandths. You can see here it's shifted two places to the right is what's happened. Now we have that 1.5, so we have 15 tenths. We're going to multiply that by one hundredth should let us know already that that hundredth is letting us know that that digit's going to move two places to the right. So now we're going to end up with 15 over 1,000, which is equal to, that's right, 15 thousandths. Again, if we have our 1.5 and we're saying that the answer or the product here is 15,000, you can see this moved one, two places to the right. That's because we're multiplying by one hundredth. 0 0.01. Had we multiplied by 100, think of that, then the digits would move two places to the left and we would end up with 150. 
So I'm going to go ahead on problem 4a. I'm going to rewrite this problem expressing this decimal as a fraction. So I'm going to put 7 times 2 tenths. The first thing I want to ask here, are these equivalent? Is 7 times 2 tenths here the same? Yeah, they're the same. They show the same thing. So when we multiply, uh, what will the numerator show? Well, it's going to show the numerator is going to show 7 times 2. and The denominator is going to be over 10. So we could rewrite this fraction as 7 times 2 over 10. Now let's go ahead and write the answer as this fraction, which is 14 over 10. And we'll go ahead and write 14 tenths as a decimal, which is 1.4. Now think about what we've been studying here with place value chart and what happens when we multiply by tenths. Does our product make sense? Looking at that, 7 copies of 2 tenths? Yeah, because we basically have our 14 tenths, and we know that in one whole we have 10 tenths, so that makes sense. And then the problem is saying that we're taking 7 copies of 2 tenths. And then 7 times 2 is 14. 7 times 2 equals 14. And then the digits in 14 both shift one place to the right because we took only one tenth of it. This is what we're trying to show here. The 7 times 2 equals 14. If we're taking one tenth of that, then that digit would, would move, right? One digit to the right. And in this case, we end up with 1.4 because we're taking one tenth of that amount. That's what I mean by that. And we talked about there being, it's just like taking two copy or uh, seven copies of the two tenths. Or you could say it's two tenths copied seven times. Remember, that means exact same thing. So I'm going to do one more problem. And again, we're just going to, I'm going to go ahead and write this out. I want you just to maybe try this on your own. And then you'll see all my work and then de determine how well you're doing. Okay, so this is just kind of showing my work here. I went ahead and showed the fraction. 7 tenths times 2 tenths is equal to 14 hundredths. And I wrote it as a decimal. Then I rewrote my equation like we've been doing in this entire lesson. I went ahead and put, you know, 7 tenths times 2 tenths. It's like 7 times 2, which is equal to 14. But we're actually multiplying by 2 one tenths here, which is 1 hundredth. So the, des the digits end up shifting two decimal places to the right then. And that would make sense. And that makes it reasonable. Okay, my friends. Boy, I think that's it. A lot of problems, I know. In fact, I think I even skipped one because this was another problem we're going to just skip. You could do on your own. I think we've done more than enough. And brings me to, what was it, one more page? No! Hello, 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 hello. <laughs> Dear kid, hey. Wow, that's a lot of little parents there. Oh, my goodness. Okay, my friends. <laughs> on that note, and for surely on that note, live long.